Hi Stampy friends! Welcome to Melissa's Crafting Treehouse. Today I've got a project for you created for the December 2019 Color Fusers Blog Hop and Color Challenge. The color challenge today is Seaside Spray, Blueberry Bushel, and Silver. In this video I'll introduce how to use the new reversible stamps. You'll learn a few ways to use water to change the look of your images and you'll see three different ways to incorporate silver into this design. Today I'll be featuring a new product called the Mountain Air Stamp Set. This stamp set is available starting December 3rd to demonstrators and to customers it'll be available starting January 3rd. Now it's available also with a coordinating set of dies. Now to start this project I'm creating a basic mountain scene. Now I've craved having images like this to play with for a very long time so I'm super excited about this stamp set. And to start with I'm using watercolor paper and I've sprayed the watercolor paper with a little bit of water. By spraying the watercolor paper to begin with, it will help to make my images look more like watercolor images rather than images with distinct clear lines. So I'm starting by taking my large mountains, inking them up with my seaside spray, and now I'm spraying the stamp itself, and then I'm going to go ahead and stamp on my focal piece. And I stamped a few times with that same inking. And now I'm going to ink up my smaller row of mountains that are in the foreground with blueberry bushel ink. And I'm going to spray that stamp as well and stamp it right there in the foreground. And again, I've uh, stamped with the same ink more than once. So as you can see, I'm coming in on the left and adding a little bit more. And then I'm going to go ahead and dry my focal piece because I'm going to be heat embossing next and I'm using a paper towel here and there to help pull up some of the moisture. Mind you when I do that it will also maybe pull up a little bit of the color. So I'm bringing in my embossing buddy and then I'm going to go ahead and stamp using my moon image so as I mentioned earlier, the stamps in this set are reversible. So I'm using the back side of the moon image to begin with, and you can see there that the back side is the flat side. It doesn't have any texture. So I'm inking it up with the blueberry bushel ink, stamping it onto my focal piece. And then I'm going to bring in my embossing buddy again to make sure that it's not moist uh, and doesn't absorb my silver embossing powder, which is the next thing I'm going to do. So first I have to wash the back side of my stamp, that's the flat side, and dry it. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn that stamp over so that the textured side that will give me the texture of the moon is facing up. Now I'm going to stamp that textured side right over the top of my blueberry bushel moon. And then I'm going to heat emboss it with my silver embossing powder. Now after I heat embossed my moon, I uh, felt like the blueberry bushel ink was just a little bit dark in the background. So I decided to spray the moon with a little bit of water and you can see it uh, bled out there. And I'm just taking my paper towel, soaking up that excess. Now this is one of the wonderful things about watercolor paper is you can get an ink on there and then you can remove it by adding a little bit of water and, and dabbing. Now I'm taking my little bird image and I'm going to stamp it in a few places and incidentally this little bird image can be turned upside down and be reversible as well and in its other position it looks like a, a little mini cloud. It's super cute. So now I also decided that um, the bottom of this focal piece was a little bit bare so I inked up just the bottom half of my smaller tree, my row of smaller trees and stamped it off sprayed it with water and as you can see I'm stamping it there at the bottom to kind of fill in the bottom just a bit and have a little bit more texture uh, where it had been white. So now I'm all done with this first focal piece so we'll go ahead and move on to the second one. Since many of the elements on these uh, two focal pieces are the same I'll primarily focus on the things that I did different. So for this focal piece, I didn't spray the watercolor paper. I just inked up the stamp with uh, seaside spray and sprayed the stamp itself with water. And as you can see, I got more of a distinct image than I did the first time because I was using less water. 
So I'm doing the same thing with this uh, smaller row of trees in the front where I didn't spray the paper, I just inked and sprayed the stamp itself and then I stamped it on my paper and I did first, second, and third inking there. You can see I stamped it three times. And then I'm actually spraying the focal piece a little bit uh, because I wanted it to be a little bit more blended than I got, especially for those background mountains. And now I'm coming in and just drying my focal piece. So for this focal piece, I actually played with it for quite a while, uh, spraying it, dabbing it off with my paper towel, drying it and heating it some more with my heat tool. And uh, as you can see, my paper towel is actually uh, giving me a little bit of sort of blue texture in the background sky. So I kind of decided to go uh, with that element uh, by adding intentionally adding some blue in the sky with my paper towel. Despite all my spraying and playing, I felt like there was a bit of an imbalance between the background mountains and the foreground mountains. The background mountains had more distinctive lines and shapes, so I wanted to balance that by stamping one of the blueberry bushel uh, images without any water in the foreground over the sort of watery foreground trees. And that's what I just did there. So now I've got two more things to work on for this focal piece. One is adding the birds, which of course I'm doing now, and the other is to find a place to add my silver element to complete the color challenge color scheme. So in order to bring the silver in, I thought I would attempt to create some uh, shiny elements in the foreground to sort of look like water. I'm going to start with cleaning my stamp for those small trees that I used in the foreground and I'm inking up just the bottom portion with my Versamark ink pad using my embossing buddy on the surface and then I'm actually holding the stamp sort of at an angle so that uh, I only get sort of the bottom portion of that image on my focal piece. And now I'm just going to heat emboss and then I'll finish up this card with just a little bit of sponging on the edges and around the bottom and in the sky with my seaside spray first and then I'll come in with my blueberry bushel for some darker accents near the edge of the focal piece on all sides. And now on high speed I'm just finishing up all the sponging with my seaside spray and blueberry bushel inks. So next we'll move on to the third focal piece and for this one I have actually sprayed the watercolor paper I went back to wanting a little bit more of a blurrier image and I'm going to ink up that large mountain image with my seaside spray. Next I'm going to dry my focal piece with my heat tool and I'm going to do this one a little bit differently because I'm going to have a moon in the background on this version. So I've created a mask off camera by stamping my image on a piece of post-it note paper and so I've uh, cut it out and I'm going to lay it right over the top of the image that I've already stamped on my focal piece. Bringing in my embossing buddy and then I'm going to ink up my moon uh, with my Versamark. Now I am doing the textured side of the moon for this first inking. And then I'm removing my mask and I'm going to go ahead and heat emboss that moon image which should look like it's set in behind the mountains because of the mask. Now I'm spraying my mountains with some water just to help make those mountains a little bit more blended looking. Inking up my smaller mountain image in blueberry bushel. I'm going to spray that stamp and then stamp in the foreground in front of those larger mountains. And I've inked, stamped it once and then now twice and a third time, and a fourth time. Then I'm coming in and heating it, dabbing up some excess water with my paper towel. And now for this one, I felt like I had that same imbalance, sort of more distinctive images in the background and more blurry images in the foreground. So I went ahead and inked up that foreground image and stamped it directly over the top of the blurry foreground images. And now I'm going to come in and sponge the edges with my seaside spray ink. 
And in this one, because it's a larger focal piece, I did a little bit more sponging so that the sky would also look more blue and there'd be less open white space. And next I'm going to add in my sponging of my blueberry bushel ink along the edges. Next I'm going to work on coloring my moon. So I uh, had to clean and turn over my stamp again. I'm doing it in the reverse order that I did last time, but either way it's the same process. So I'm turning it over. I've got my flat side facing up and I'm just going to stamp that image off. So get that first layer of ink off. And I'm spraying the stamp, although it sort of was off camera, so you probably couldn't see it. And then I'm stamping over the top. Now, the color didn't really get into the grooves um, because of uh, the raised element of the heat embossing. So I chose to pull in my aqua painter, grab a little bit of ink from my stamp pad, and uh, just sort of blend those colors and make sure there was a little bit of blue in the moon. The final touch for this card is to, of course, add the birds in the sky, and then I'm ready to assemble all my cards. So for all of my card designs, I used the Subtle Embossing folder. So I dry embossed two of the piece that you see here for two of the three cards, and for the third one, I dry embossed the whole front of the card base, which was also done in Seaside Spray. So for the first two card designs. I simply attached my Seaside Spray piece of dry embossed cardstock to the front of the card body, centered top to bottom, and then I've attached my focal piece directly to my blueberry bushel cardstock, and then I've attached that piece to my card base using Stampin' Dimensionals. So the second card design is assembled in exactly the same way, and the third card is even simpler. For this one, of course, I've dry embossed that card base, the front of the card base, with the subtle embossing folder. And then I'm just attaching my blueberry bushel cardstock to the front of the card. And then I'm going to attach my focal piece directly to that. And on this one, I didn't use any dimensionals at all. I hope you enjoyed these three project variations and seeing the different ways to use water and ways to incorporate silver into these designs. I can't wait to play more with these new reversible images in the Mountain Air stamp set. You'll be able to purchase this stamp set and bundle starting on January 3rd, 2020. If you just can't wait, you may want to consider purchasing the starter kit. As of December 3rd, you'll be able to include pre-order items like this in your starter kit purchase. To learn more about becoming a Stampin' Up! discount shopper and Treehouse Chick team member, click on the link in the video description below. If you like this color scheme, make sure to check out the Color Fusers blog hop. You'll find a link to my blog post in the video description below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with friends, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching today, and happy crafting!